Good morning, good morning. Hey, if you have ever struggled with finding passenger lists, um, using them, deciphering them, figuring out what they tell you about your family history, you're in the right place because that's what we're going to do today. And I'm really excited to um, explore immigration passenger lists with you. Um, this is Elevens is with Lisa, and I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and um, we are going to really dig in today. In fact, I'm going to answer one of my uh, premium members' questions about passenger lists. Uh, I'm very fortunate. This is a photograph that we have from the ship of my husband's great-grandfather, Harry Cook, there on the left. And they've handwritten that the um, captain, who was on the right, actually passed away on the voyage in 1912. Um, now, the Cooks, Harry and his son and wife, they traveled first class. Um, that's not what happens on my side of the family. <laughs> We're in steerage. But no matter where your ancestors spent their time on the ship, all of them got recorded on a passenger list. And that means there's information for us to find as family historians. So um, I am armed with my morning tea. I don't know what time of day it is for you, but um, grab your teacup and let's head to um, talking about passenger lists, seeing what other people are dealing with in terms of their records. And uh, this was an email that I got from a premium member. Now, at Genealogy Gems, which is my website, we have a a yearly premium membership and I hear from lots of people get lots of emails and I love answering questions because I know that when you guys write me with your question chances are somebody else has similar questions and of course along the way we're all going to pick up a little something I certainly do every time I put uh, one of these shows together so okay so Deborah who Huber oh I should have asked you Deborah exactly Huber to say your last name. And I think she's in our live chat today as we um, go through this. She emailed me about her Felberg family. Okay, so she shared this wonderful photograph of them. Otto, age 33, is her grandfather, and he was born 1894. Uh, Marta, or Martha, was age 23, and that's her grandmother, born in 1904. And her mother, Ruth, in this, um, well, when she came to America, was Three. She was uh, born right around 1924. I don't have the exact birth dates, but I gleaned this from the ages of when they made their voyage. And Deborah wrote and she says, my mother was born in Heinrich Heinrichshof, which is East Prussia, on Stork Day. And now that's a day and I've heard of Stork Day, even, but I had to look it up again. <laughs> it's and she says it's a day celebrating the return of the storks in the spring and welcoming welcoming them to their nests on top of the chimneys. How wonderful is that? And how appropriate for the birth of a baby. So the family in this photograph here in uh, Heinrichshof, they sailed on March 25th, 1927 from Hamburg, Germany to New York. But Deborah had a couple of questions about this. And um, let me see here. I need to get to the right. I need to get to the right place. Lisa, you need to get to the right place. Hello, there's the photo. I'm surprised Bill didn't come running in here. What are you doing? <laughs> they can't see what you're looking at. Okay. So um, anyway, this is the wonderful photo of the family. And um, we are going to try to dig into their passenger list. And in fact, Deborah did some of that and she ran into some questions along the way that I think we're going to be able to answer. So there's two kinds of passenger lists to look for for a family like this. Um, we have the passenger list in Germany, the one that was created in Germany, and then there's a New York passenger list as well. And a lot of times when you first get started in, in your research, you come across those New York passenger lists perhaps, but don't realize there's another set over in Germany. So um, the, here's where you would go to look to find a passenger list. At Ancestry.com, we go to search, okay? We're gonna click immigration and travel. And I'm gonna type in his name here, Otto Felberg, okay? And we could put an approximate year just in case there's multiple autos out there and click search. Okay, 
got some results. This is great. So I see here Hamburg passenger list, 1850 to 1934, and 1927 is the departure. So that looks like we're in the right place. Uh, also, once he got into America, back in 1943, he made a crossing to Canada. But here's our New York passenger list. Okay, so we've got Hamburg and we've got New York for 1927 for auto. Let's go and check for Martha. Okay, now we need to change her birth year. 1904. Now, Martha has been active, but do we have both? I see our New York passenger list from 1927 when they first came. She she makes a trip in 1850, 1958, if this is the same Martha. Um, there's a North Dakota naturalization record, which I think is her because I think they went to North Dakota. 56, 57. Okay, so I'm not seeing a 1927 Hamburg, Germany passenger list. Don't fret. We're not going to give up yet because um, we can. We have other places to look. So take a look here. We can see on Otto's record on the left, he's got both. And this is what we were looking at for Martha, just the one. So no Hamburg list. Okay, well, there's another way to look for passenger lists over at Ancestry, and that would be to dig into that card catalog. And we've talked about the card catalog um, on the show before because a lot of times there's collections you might not be aware of or they're not popping up in your search results. So we're going to type in Hamburg passenger in title. Here we go. Now, interestingly, something the card catalog tells you that, again, you might not realize in your people search is there's an index. Okay, so there's a handwritten index. There's the records themselves. We're going to click the records themselves and, and let's do a search for Martha Felberg. Nothing there. Now, don't give up. Okay, we need to go back and edit our search. Let's just do Felberg. Okay, now several Felbergs, as we go down, oh, I know what I see here. So it was Marta, okay? So, and I discovered this after uh, Deborah emailed me and said it was Martha and she wasn't coming up. Here we've got 1927, she's uh, born in 1904, whoa. <laughs> Do you ever run into records like that that are just like this big, dark mess of writing? And I don't know what's happening here. In fact, Deborah said she had a really hard time figuring out what this thing says. As I'm looking at the page, okay, so we're looking for Felbergs. I'm not seeing them. Hmm. Okay. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. So we do know there is a record for Marta Felberg in Hamburg as well. So we've got both sets for both people. So pause there because we're going to come back to that, that uh, document in a moment. Deborah asked, I know the ship was the Albert Ballin. Okay, and that's true. You can see that in the results here. I always thought that they departed from Bremen, but it looks like they actually left from Hamburg. Yep. Would you agree? I would agree. That's absolutely what the results say. So um, don't make assumptions, right? And, and, and there's ways to verify this as well, because we even then don't have to believe 100% that the result that's been transcribed here is accurate. Hey, I had a twin. If you were in, a last, in one of my previous shows, you know the ancestry thinks I have a twin. I don't. So we know that there can be mistakes. Okay, she also says, uh, it lists the arrival place as Boulogne, Southampton, and New York. I assume that they made stops in all three places, in France, and England, and New York. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely what I would uh, take from that as well. So it's very possible that this ship was making stops at different ports along the way, picking up passengers. Um, and then sometimes you'll see those routes. Oftentimes you won't see. You'll just see the end um, arrival location. So let's go find the ship. We have, uh, I think it was the Arthur Ballon. Let's go to immigration and travel. And we're going to go back and get Martha's record. 
because it's always interesting. You know, she pointed out that the, the ship's name and it's fun to see that the, you can see what these ships look like. So if we go back to her New York passenger list record. You can see they give you a little kind of uh, image and there might be a link here. Search the ship database. You can click that. You can also click to view an image of the of the um, ship. We're going to click the link. And here's the oh Albert Ballon. OK, so it will tell you what line it was working for and that kind of thing. You can click and take a look at the picture, which is kind of cool. Let's do that. And we need to zoom out a little bit. Wow. Family history just got a little more personal. We just got a little more sense of what they were looking at as they uh, approached the ship. And you can download this image. So up in the right hand corner, and I always download the records I find. I don't just attach them. I'm going to download this to my computer and save it. And the reason for that is, uh, and I've written about this on my website, there's if you let your uh, subscription lapse and you've only been attaching records, you're not necessarily going to have access to those after you decide to no longer pay for a subscription. So I just I'm a control freak. I want my own. Uh, and look at this. Here's a link search for departure in Hamburg passenger lists. So had we gone to this result, it says, hey, look, you want to go look for that. And I love that that Ancestry is giving us a little a uh, heads up there is another database that you probably should be looking at for Martha, because if she's on this ship, she probably has a record in the Hamburg passenger list. And there she is as Martha. So again, even though uh, it came from a Martha record, it says there's another collection, we still had to do a little creative digging to find the actual record. Wonderful. So now you've, you've already seen the ship, you've got your copy of it. And Deborah had more questions. So she says, and look at this adorable picture of her mom. Oh, she's so cute. Okay. Also, my mother always said that they didn't go through Ellis Island, but they did land in New York City. I think Castle Gardens was already closed in 1927. So I'm trying to figure out where did they land? Okay. Now, I love you, Deborah. I love your mother, but she was three. Okay. So we don't know for sure if that's an accurate memory, right? Um, it is telling us that the port of arrival was New York. And when you look just below her name at the top, it says in New York arriving, including Castle Garden and Ellis Island. So they're really indicating this as well. Now, my understanding of history is as well, Ellis Island would have been the port, but we have ways we can check. Okay. We don't have to go just on memory. It's wonderful to have the family stories. Oh my gosh. How about a quick Google? So if we do a quick Google, we find that we do Castle Garden, years of operation, and it did close in 1890. Okay, we're looking for 1927. The place to go is the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation website. This may not be the first site you go to look for a passenger list, but we're going to search for Ruth Felberg because we want to know are the because they have the original records there and they've digitized them. And there she is. So it's important if you have any question, did they come to Ellis Island? Go check it. Even if you found them at Family Search, you found them at Ancestry, um, we see right here. Here is the record. Let's look up here. I see an auto. There's Ruth. Okay. So Felberg, there's the family. There's Ruth. So by using another site with the same records, we can do some verification. And I kind of like how really crisp, crystal clear these records are. Um, they have a way that you can order um, high resolution, fancier copies of the records. And they're indicating here there's multiple pages from this passenger list. That's important to know. In fact, I got the sense um, in reading Deborah's email, there's a chance she hadn't seen page two. So we're going to get into that, OK? So we have verified that over at heritage.statueofliberty.org slash passenger, I know, all this is going to be in the show notes for you, you're going to be able to search and verify. If you see New York on a record at another website, you can make sure that it actually came through Ellis Island. So where else could you look? Well, for passenger lists, remember, I mentioned FamilySearch. Now that's a free website, familysearch.org. 
and um, they also have these passenger list collections. They're not going to have all the same as Ancestry or My Heritage or anywhere else, or Ellis Island, um, but they do have an awful lot. Here's a great site if you get into trouble, <laughs> if you're just not finding somebody and you're convinced that they have a passenger list and you're just not finding them. Whether it's the spelling is different, the town is different, the age is way off, there are so many factors that just kind of muddle it up. Um, Steve Morse does his one step website. It's stevemorse.org. And you got to love it because it is all about search. It's and he's got lots of different links here. I've just taken a quick screenshot. You want to put this on your list because it's a wonderful way to um, have so much more flexibility on searching the Ellis Island records that we saw at the Statue of Liberty website. Um, their search engine isn't as good as Steve's. And I interviewed him many years ago in person. You might have heard him on the Genealogy Gems podcast, which I've been doing since 2007. Uh, gosh, I want to say it was probably 2008, 2009 that I, I got together with Steve, uh, Stephen. So um, he's a real talented guy. He, he knows how to dig into these records. And in fact, Ellis Island learned a few things from him when it comes to search. This is going to link you over, give you the search fields that you need to be able to have, you know, like wild cards and things that are going to help you when the spelling's off and there's just, you know, some challenges facing you when it comes to the search. So we've found Little Miss Ruth. I love it. Okay. Deborah also says on the screenshot from, and I told you we'd get back to the Hamburg um, passenger list. From the Hamburg list, it says the destination was Green Lake. Now, when we say destination, that's not where the ship's going to land. It's, it's where the passenger expects to end up. That's where they're going. That's their final destination. And she asked, is that a port? All I could find on the internet about Green Lake is that it's a New York State Park. I have a deep suspicion that, it, that that's not the one that Otto is talking about. Um, but we've got ways to find out because there's more we can do to dig into the records and you got to go the original record. So when um, she sent me the images, I was seeing the results page. So I'm not totally sure. I didn't ask Deborah if she actually has an Ancestry subscription. Um, I think she does because she mentioned that she had looked at the Hamburg list, the original documents that are digitized. And she says, I can't read the actual document, which is the Hamburg passenger list. Okay, everybody, look, put, put your double glasses on if you have to. Sometimes I have to layer two glasses. And look, that's a hot mess. And it's in German. <laughs> so that's going to be kind of hard. And in fact, if you look really closely at this document, I think what we're seeing is somebody got really happy with a black ink pen and they were filling this out and maybe they closed the book and then they reopened it because half this text is going to the right and half of it looks like it's written backwards. And I think that's exactly what's happened, which has really muddled it up. No wonder Deborah couldn't read this thing. But I've got some tricks for you. I think we're going to be able to decipher it. Okay, so let's go back to our original Hamburg record on Ancestry. We're going to go to search, right? Immigration. And here's Ruth. Okay. So we have her. She's age three. Her destination is Green Lake. Can we find a notation about that? Can we even find the Felberg family in this passenger list? So here was that page. This is the page that Ancestry is taking you to and saying, this is Ruth's record. It's not. And it's really aggravating because you could spend hours doing this, right? And you just think, well, why would they link to it? I don't know. I think we're in the right place. I think we're in the right collection. But as you go down this list, and I'm looking very carefully, you know what I'm doing? The names are so impossible to read. Look at the age. Age three should stand out. It looks like it might be even a little clearer to read. So I don't see 
her on this page at all. Now, if we click the film strip, okay, so we see oh, there's lots of records here, but they're not in, oh, they're in worse shape, okay? They're in worse shape. So remember there was an index when we used the card catalog to do our search, we were told that there's more than just records for passengers. They've got indexes and that index could help us. So we're going to come back to the card catalog and we're going to search for Hamburg passenger. Okay. So now we're going to click indexes. And that's our first link up here. This covers the same time frame. It's not going to list her record as in searchable. What you have to do is browse the collection. So over here, we're going to browse, we're going to go to remember, it's 1927. So 1925 to 1934. And that gives us a new option for the band. The band is by year. Okay, and we're going to come down to 1927. And Felberg, of course, has an F. So we need the F through J for 1927. And then we're going to click the F's because they have written these names in and they're going to cross reference what exact page on the Hamburg list will we find this person. So this jumps us into the beginning of the F's. We're going to have to dig around a little bit. So let's just jump ahead to page four. Oh, we're still off. F A. So here's F E D's. Not quite. We can use our arrow to the right. There's more pages. Okay, we're not going to give up. Uh, the FEI, we're looking for Felberg. Here's 10. We're getting closer. Let's see. Felder. Okay, I think we have to go back one. Let's go to nine. And I think we're in the right spot. So, oh, Philberg. Okay, let's zoom in. So we see Marta, Otto, Rudolph. She didn't mention a Rudolph. And we've got Ruth. So this index says it's page 117. Okay. So this number is the page number and chances are it's handwritten on the document. So now we need to go back to the uh, records themselves. And remember, we can do this through the card catalog. And, and I'm, I'm sometimes I open these in other tabs, but I want you to get used to seeing that card catalog is the important place to go. Let's click the actual lists. And, you know, we can jump to the general location we know because we can put Ruth's name in. So let's type in Ruth Felberg and click search. And we know that when we click this link, we're going to be kind of in the right spot, but not really. We're going to clue the, view the image. Okay. Now you got to zoom out and look in that upper right hand corner. We could actually let's zoom in a little bit. This one's hard to read. Okay, that's the page she's supposed to be on where we don't see her. Let's go up to this one. 111. We're off. A little bit. Well, ancestry's off a little bit. So let's go back up here. 113. Okay. Remember our pro tip to go to the next page, do N on your keyboard, to go to the previous page, do the P on your keyboard. That was something we talked about in our previous 11s with Lisa. Ah, page 111. Okay. 117. They should be here, right? Now I know it's, it's a hot mess of handwriting, but <laughs> we're going to use my pro tip, look for the age, don't look for the name, because we've literally got names with t with handwriting smushed right on top of it. Check this out. There's the three. And it does say Felberg. Now I looked through this first, I just skimmed without looking at the number. And I didn't see that Felberg that didn't look like Felberg. But look, Otto. And you, if you look carefully, Marta and Ruth. So they're there. They're a couple pages down the road. They got a little bit of smushy handwriting on top of them, but they are there. I love this. Okay. And there is Rudolph. Okay. 
I did check back with Deborah and I asked, is there a Rudolph in the family? And she said, Otto has a brother. And I think they went to, uh, he like sponsored them. And he lived in Milwaukee and they ended up there. Well, Deborah, Rudolph's on the ship with them. So he may have actually gone back to get them and come back. And there were many people who did that kind of thing where they did sponsor and they literally made the trip. So we have found them in Hamburg. I love this. Okay, so it was doable. It took a little more sleuthing. Um, but remember we said on the screenshot from Hamburg, it said Green Lake. But is that a port? Well, does it say Green Lake? Here they are on the page. We've zoomed in and there it is. I know. It, it's hard to read, but once you know what you're looking for, once your eyes have gotten used to the fact that there's the two-way handwriting happening here, you can see it's handwritten Green Lake. And of course, this is where they're going to. Unfortunately, we still don't know where that is, but I'm really happy to see that they're acknowledging it. And um, if you want more of the Ancestry Pro Tips that I'm talking about here, that was episode 17. Go back and review that. Uh, if you're a premium member, there's a special little uh, download with all these little hot key, you know, it's like a little hot key uh, cheat sheet. And, um, and then the, the complete show notes are there for everybody. Go check it out because it saves you a lot of time jumping back and forth. You're not hunting and pecking for arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay, so let's go back and review the original New York passenger list. She says Hamburg was Green Lake. Is that a port? Okay. Well, we found it on Hamburg. Let's go to New York. Is Green Lake mentioned? And it was interesting. She did not mention to me that she had seen anything about that. Only that the Green Lake was on the results list. And if you look at this page, I don't see Green Lake for the Philbergs. So here's Otto, Martha, and Ruth, lines two, three, and four. Ruth's even stamped as under 16. They were tracking that. And we've got their ages. He's a farm. He was a farmer. Okay. And um, whether or not they speak German or write German, um, what their language is. Okay. And we're going to go over the, the form a little more carefully because some of these things are kind of hard to read. Here's their town. So Ruth, it looks to me as um, Deborah said, was born in, now they've got Heinrichhof and they've also got the villages for Martha and Otto. Oh, your heart's just got to go pitter patter when you see that because a lot of times that's hard to get. But this is not the only page of this document. Always look for the second page. On the passenger list, go to page two. Depending on the year, there may or may not be a page two, but in this case there is and it's terribly exciting. Okay, so Line two, that's Otto, right? And look here. So Otto, it lists his father. Let's, let, let's go take a closer look here. Okay, so here they are. This was page one. Green Lake. I love it. Okay, so it says, what's your final destination? And it says, well, first and foremost, um, the, the closest family member that they left behind was his father, Samuel Fulberg, and he lived in Trutino, and that was Otto's father. Okay, where are they going? They're going to Green Lake, and look, the state listed Wisconsin. And I'm sure for Deborah, this just puts off bells because Rudolph is from Milwaukee, the brother. And now we know that Rudolph was actually on the ship, which is really cool. So check this out. It says, whether going to a relative or a friend, and if, uh, and what's their name and address? So br.i.l is brother-in-law. So they're going to his brother-in-law, Andreas Schultz. Now, we have to, she's got to do a little homework to figure this out, but we might wonder, I would wonder, looking at this, if Martha's maiden name is Schultz. Because if this is now remember, this is listed on Otto's line. This would be Otto's brother-in-law. Doesn't mean it could be his sister married somebody. We know that. But 
it's a little clue worth pursuing. We definitely would want Deborah to um, track down Andreas Schultz. He lives in Green Lake. So Rudolph may be sponsoring them. He may be even making the trip with them, which it looks like he is. But they intend to go to, he's got work, it sounds like, with Andreas Schultz in Green Lake, Wisconsin, Route Four. <laughs> I don't know if you can plot that on a Google Earth map, but um, that's pretty cool. So they're still now they're writing it as one word, Green Lake. So as I did a little bit of research, did a quick Google search, it's Green Lake, Wisconsin, and that's why I think when uh, Deborah, you searched for Green Lake originally, it came up with there's lots of Green Lakes, all one word in different places. But Green Lake, Wisconsin is where they're going to go. And this is not too far from Milwaukee, as I understand it. So Google, once again, kind of helps bring some clarity to this. I love clicking image search. So if you click the image results, um, we see instant. Well, in fact, when I first did it, I got a whole bunch of, you know, like pictures from their city website. So I added the word history. And um, look, we're already getting old maps, photographs, postcards. Now we're very quickly in just a few minutes time, what are we, we were 30 minutes into it, we're already not only having seen the ship they were coming on, but we're now looking at the location where they are headed to. And I love that. I just feel like imagery brings our family history to life. And it brings these documents that non-genealogists don't think are all that fascinating to life too. And it helps everybody kind of really see the full story. So you got to love that. Do some more Google searching because um, you can find all kinds. If you do the, the Green Lake history for Wisconsin, oh gosh, the Wisconsin Historical Society has all kinds of goodies. They have these maps. They have postcards from 1910, lots of stuff. So um, easy to find. Go to Google. And that's a great tip for anybody. Uh, when you're looking for a location here in the U.S., you know, you're going to search for the historical society for the state, maybe at the state level. There might be one at the county level. There might even be one for the town or the city. So we've made a lot of progress so far, but we've got more to do. OK, so we need to take a closer look at passenger lists. And again, all passenger lists are different. If you're looking back in, you know, 1830, I know you're kind of dabbing your eye because you don't get this much information like you do in 1927, which is uh, in Deborah's case. But no matter what the year, there's going to be a variation on the different questions being asked and the information being provided. And all of it can provide little clues to help you dig into other places. So Deborah says, uh, she sent this photo too. I love this photo. My grandparents and my mother from their passports. So these are her passport uh, photos. My mother was four when they immigrated to the US. And of course, my first thought is, if you know, you it looks like she has an original passport, or maybe she just has the photographs, uh, you can go search on Ancestry for passports as well. You might find their passports. So love it. Now we've got the family making their way over. Let's go back and look more closely at their passenger list. So again, on page one of the New York passenger list, we have this Heinrich Hoff, Heinrichs Hoff, uh, which is where Ruth was born. And we have Kul Kuluka, maybe. And these are, uh, I think Deborah mentioned, in East Prussia. So if we take this, I, th I thought, I just wanted to show you a sense of when you get a village like this, uh, if you're fortunate, go do some searches. So Deborah told me in her email, Heinrichs Hoff, which was known as Henry's estate, was a landed estate. I could never find it on any maps until I followed your information on how to use David Rumsey historical maps and was over the moon when I finally found it. And I love hearing that. That's awesome. So she's talking about davidrumsey.com. And that is a free site where you can search for maps. He's got over 150,000 digitized maps on his website. And uh, well, I should say, the whole collection is 150,000. I think he's probably around 115,000 are digitized. And now what they're doing is they're working to actually try and geo-reference the old map with the new map. In, in my book, The Genealogist Google Toolbox, I talk about David Rumsey specifically, which is what Deborah was mentioning, and how to geo-reference or overlay the maps themselves 
Once you can download them from free for free from David Rumsey, I show you how to do it in Google Earth. The beauty of that is that even if it's geo-referenced on David Rumsey, I think you'll find that Google Earth is easier to use, has way more bells, whistles, and tools. And if you're doing other types of work, um, geographically speaking, or telling the story, or plotting out the path that they took on their immigration, um, having it all in one place is a really big bonus. It's a lot easier than remembering that you have to go to this site and that site and this site because that's where all your stuff is all over the place. So I think of Google Earth, which is a free software program, as just kind of my home base for anything that I'm trying to analyze or tell a story about in a ge geographical setting. And geographically, I mean, that's what genealogy is all about. It's about where were they and when were they there? right? And those two pieces is what brings them together. So she had mentioned that um, you see Konigsberg over here in the far left. And she said it's kind of south and then going east. And here's Lindenau. And then uh, Henry's estate was very close to there. So and, and this was just one of several. I did a really quick search. Um, and this was just one of several old maps that they had over there uh, that are free. I would recommend when you download them, to go for a high quality, I found that right around 3000 pixels, which is considered large, and there's probably seven different size that they offer. But I like the 3000 because I could really um, zoom in and read all this little, you know, minutia that they've, they've written, they've handwritten on these old, old maps. So love this. Page two. This is where the heading gets kind of hard. <laughs> if you guys, you find yourself doing this, right, for about an hour, and even then, it's kind of smudgy. First, let me just say that when you run into a record like this, you're reading, You maybe you can read clearly what it says for your ancestor, but you're having a hard time with the form itself. Um, just pulling this record up in different websites, because we said Family Search has them, and Ancestry has them, and um, you know, you can, Ellis Island has them. So they're all going to have potentially different digitized versions. One might be clearer than the other. So it never hurts to go and take a look at those. So this first section says the name and complete address of the nearest living relative. And of course, we mentioned that that was Samuel Felberg, Otto's father. So that's really awesome. I looked up Trutno, and um, that's in East Prussia as well. And let's move down here. So we see that their final destination is Green Lake. And there's a question here, whether they have a ticket to their final destination. And this might be, do you already have a train ticket? And chances are they may have been able to purchase that at the port in Hamburg. And it looks like uh, most people on this page say yes. Auto certainly says yes here. So. When you see all the, the ditto marks, of course, you're going to have to look up to the next guy until you see what the answer was and it's being pulled all the way down. Our next one. Okay. By whom was passage paid? Now, we think of uh, this, the family story, which may have been in Deborah's family, that Rudolph was sponsoring them, and he certainly is making the trip. But um, even if he is, I bet you Otto was coached to say, I'm paying for it. I've got the money. I've got $400. Yes, they were absolutely coached to the, what the right answers were to make sure that they made it through the inspection at Ellis Island. Uh, not everybody got it right, but you know, they, they knew what to say. So uh, in, in this case, Otto is saying he's got 400 and it's his own. Um, and it says here, whether you're in, oh, whether you're in possession of $50 or more. And he says he's got 400. And then here, have you ever been in the US before? And most of these people, of course, are saying no. Now, notice, you don't see Rudolph on this record. He's actually in a different part of the New York passenger list. So we saw him in Hamburg, he was just a couple lines ahead. Lots of different reasons why they may not be in line together. And put on the passenger list in, in the same order. So Deborah's got a, a little to-do item, which is to go back, and, and I did a quick look, and I saw that Rudolph does have a passenger list record in New York, 
uh, in the New York passenger list collection. So go back and search for him and find what he says here as well. My guess is he's going to say, yeah, I've been in the U.S. before. I came from there. But um, Otto says no. Who are you joining? Whether you're joining a relative or a friend, do you have an address for where you're going? And he says, yep, the brother-in-law, Andreas Schultz, in Green Lake, Wisconsin, in Route 4. We're going to have to zoom in on this <laughs> next section because it gets a little more challenging reading the columns. The purpose in coming is basically, do you plan to stay? And I think they want to hear that people plan to stay. They're not just kind of going back and forth. But it may not matter. He says, I want to be permanent. And everybody here is expecting to be permanent. Do you intend to become a citizen? Yes. Everybody's saying yes. Now, this whole section here, um, this is all about, have you gotten into trouble? Is there any reason we might be concerned about you, right? Have you ever been in prison, an almshouse, an insane institution? Are you a polygamist? Are you an anarchist? Do you believe in overthrowing the government? Or have you been previously deported? These were important issues for immigration officers then. And they asked, and everybody here says, no, no, I'm ready to go. Here in this section, we're really getting kind of a little glimpse at the unique characteristics of the people themselves. So everything from condition of health, both their mental and physical uh, health, whether they're deformed, crippled, nature, uh, the length of time, not assuming that every, you know, if somebody has a broken leg that it's always been broken. Um, how tall are they? Okay, so uh, Otto and Martha both say they're five, six, and Ruth is three. Complexion, fair. Color of hair, blonde. They're all blondes. And blue-eyed. And nobody's wearing glasses. Notice that the guy above Otto does wear glasses. And uh, I noticed that everybody on this page uh, who, who wears glasses was... Uh, mentioned and had little notations made about what the issue was with why they were wearing them and, and whether they were basically cleared to go forward. So there you have it. We've determined that indeed the whole family is in both sets of records and we can read the Homburg records. It, it takes, you know, getting used to, particularly when they make that little mess of, of the ink, but take your time being aware that the link that you're linking through to may not be taking you to the right spot. So that's good to know. And um, we've verified that Ruth, yes, came through Ellis Island with her family. And Deborah's got more to do. She's got Rudolph to go check out and get his New York passenger list, learn more about that. And, and now we have a place where they went to straight off the ship. Uh, for more resources, and again, I'll have everything for you guys in the show notes page, which is... I got a couple emails about this week, so let me explain. Genealogygems.com slash 11s. That will take you straight to the archive page where you get to click and pick which episode you want. So you'll be looking for this shirt <laughs> and episode 34 on the picture, and you'll click that to go to the show notes page for this episode. And for those of you watching live, that'll be out in a couple of days. And I always announce it in the next newsletter and give you a link so you can click right over to it. And I had a listener, a uh, premium member, email me and she said, I'm not finding the show notes. And I just finally bit the bullet and I've put Elevenses in the main menu. So it used to say video. And of course, it went to our YouTube channel and everything. We're not going to make you hunt and peck for it. So uh, in at genealogygems.com, you'll see this blue color menu at the top and you're going to click right on Elevenses and you'll see a link to Elevenses videos and show notes. I don't know why we were making you work so hard to get there. <laughs> so, um, okay. Resources, passenger lists. Okay. There's a finding aid over at the National Archives. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Uh, Family Search Wiki is a great resource particularly if uh, you're looking for something other than Germany or a whole different time frame, go check out the Family Search Wiki. FamilySearch.org has a wiki and like a like an encyclopedia type of a website. And there you can look up um, immigration. In this case, we would do New York immigration and immigration, uh, coming and going, uh, leaving and coming. And you can look it up for wherever they're coming from, the ports. There's lots and lots of links there that will get you straight to what you need to know. In Dream, if you're a premium member, and I hope you are, because there's lots of goodies to being a premium member, um, at my website, 
the premium podcast episode 153. That was a lot of fun. Okay, just a, not too long ago, a couple years ago, two years ago. I went to Ellis Island and met with Jackie Shock. She's the director of the American Family Immigration History Center, and that's at the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation. And she gives a lot more clues on what to look for in passenger lists. In fact, we found my great grandmother not once, but twice in the same passenger list. (laughs) And there I am with Jackie. And in Genealogy Gems podcast episode 211, you get to hear my conversation with Barry Moreno, and he is the his, one of the historians at Ellis Island. And you know, uh, that was an interesting day. Talk about genealogical serendipity that almost saves your life. That day, we were doing a lot of filming. My daughter Hannah came with me, and we were uh, f- filming and interviewing all over Ellis Island. And um, we were going to leave around 3. I think it was around 3. And then it was like, you know, we need to go film something else. And we just both at the same moment said, yeah, let's go back there and get a little bit more footage. And so we went back to film and we get back on the ferry to go back to New York at around, I think it was four. And we're halfway across the water and everybody's phone's going off. And I'm looking across the bay and all you see is this descending of uh, first responders, ambulances and fire and police. And everybody's asking on our phones, are you okay? Are you okay? And what had happened was there was a terrorist attack that day. And that's when um, we were going to go down for a walk along the bike path. And there was a terrorist attack where a man came and ran over, I think, seven people that day. It was horrible. And genealogy saved our lives, literally. So I remember that very, very well, along with these wonderful people that I got to meet with that day. And I think you'll enjoy the conversations with them. Um, Let me go back here and see where I'm at. Um, Navigating is is the biggest challenge. I'm not too good at navigating. Hey, I'm back. (laughs) Explain how to find the show notes on the website. Okay, so again, when you go to genealogygems.com, There'll be a blue menu and it doesn't, and the little spot used to say videos. And now it says 11s. Click that. It will take you to the page with all the 11s episodes. If you're a premium member, you'll also find 11s under premium videos. All the ones that have been archived, which I think was episodes one through 10 so far, have been archived and they're available exclusively with all the handouts and all that stuff uh, under premium videos. So um, I want to share with you before we close up a little story from my own family and my family's immigration story. Um, But first, I put in the chat for the live show asking if you were interested in a Thanksgiving Day uh, show. And I I know a lot of you were very worried about me that I wasn't going to be with my family uh, or I was opting not to be with my family in order to do it. The truth is 2020 has taken a toll on our family. And I know it's taken a toll on some others. And it's not just COVID. It's actually politics. And it creates strains, uh, not on our part, on Bill and and my part. um, But there are strains within the family. We have family in different locations who aren't able to be here. And unfortunately, others who are opting not to this year. And I only share that with you, one, just because it's my real life. (laughs) And it's heartbreaking. Um, I still have a ton of faith. And I pray every day it's going to be different. Um, But don't let politics, COVID, the news, big tech, don't let anybody keep you from your family or or tell you something about your family you don't think uh, that might not be quite right. So that's all I'll say about it. It's been hard. Um, So Bill and I are going to be by ourselves this Thanksgiving. And um, I would love to be with you if you'd like to get together. I have stuff. It'll be kind of easygoing, low key. I don't know how organized I'll be, but I'll take a look at chat and see how many of you are going to be around. Because a lot of people also, even if politics isn't sticking its dirty head in the middle of your family business, um, it might be a COVID issue. It might be there are many states, and I've been speaking to some of the most locked down states, and they are hugely discouraging Thanksgiving gatherings, which I think is a shame, but I don't want to leave anybody alone. Um, So if you'd like to get together, stay tuned to the newsletter. 
I will announce if we're going to do a show and what time. I think it's going to be about the same time. Okay. Um, hey, this too will pass. I don't have any worries. Okay, so I want to share with you this um, story. You know, you know, I love video and I love making videos. And uh, this is my Sporowski great grandparents and their story of coming to America in 1910. I hope it inspires you to find your family's story. enjoyed that. You guys are going to make me cry. I love you guys. <laughs> In the chat, you're wonderful. Um, you know, my great grandparents were very, very proud to be Americans and they cherished their freedom. I like to think they were pretty darn smart and brave. I hope you're staying smart and brave too. And um, I want to thank you so much for watching my friend. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>